Landmines affect millions of people around the world. They're explosive devices that are detonated by the pressure of a footstep. But anti-personal landmines are indiscriminate killers. They don't know if it's the footstep of a soldier or the footstep of a little toddler going out to collect water for his family. The purpose of a landmine is not to kill. It's to cause maximum pain and impairment. The victim is alienated and left to suffer for life. Although they were first used in the 15th century at the Battle of Agincourt in England, landmines were only used as major battlefield weapons during World War II. Weather deteriorates landmines, but this takes decades. That means that landmines from World War II are still around today. Many are in countries that have been at peace for years. At the beginning of the 20th century, almost 80% of landmine victims were in the military. Today, over 80% are civilians. Once every 22 minutes, Three times an hour, 64 times each day, someone steps on a landmine. Most are civilians, thousands are children. Most die. But for those who survive, what would their lives be like in five, 10, 20 years? Tens of millions of landmines are buried in over 65 countries. It costs as little as three dollars to make a mine, thousands to remove one. This has gotten so out of control when you have nearly a hundred million landmines that are armed and ready to go off in over 60 countries. Can anybody stand here and say, we have control of this or it's being used responsibly? The individual victim, the child, the, the mother, the father going out to collect firewood or to graze their animals and step on a landmine. Obviously their life is changed forever and 26,000 people annually are victims around the world of that weapon. Landmines take the lives of over 26,000 people worldwide every year. Some landmines are actually designed to look like children's toys. The bright colors of these butterfly landmines attract innocent children who stray into minefields while playing. They will pick up the landmine out of curiosity and it will explode. Many children lose their parents to landmines and in a matter of seconds are suddenly responsible for taking care of the entire family. Once a child or other innocent civilian loses a limb to a landmine, they are considered to be useless in society, the lowest of the low, and a burden to their family. They have little chance of succeeding in life. Due to this, of the 26,000 people that die annually from landmines, 50% are children. All it takes is one mine, even the suspicion of one, to make a minefield. This means that people will not be able to use the land to grow food, to rebuild their homes, or have access to clean water and health centers. They live in constant fear that they'll step on a landmine. Not only do minefields psychologically and physically affect the individual and their family, they affect entire communities. The presence of landmines makes most water unsafe to consume and sanitation levels extremely low. Since most mines are in countries that rely primarily on agriculture, they destroy the economy. One mine can make an entire tract of land unusable. Tourism, transportation, and trading are also destroyed since minefields cut off the village from the rest of the world. Landmines are used to disrupt daily life so that people will leave their homes and their land and be left wandering, totally destitute. Many end up in refugee camps, which quickly become overcrowded and full of disease. Or maybe it was a magazine. Princess Diana helped raise landmine awareness to a new level, helping to save and rebuild thousands of lives in every corner of the world. By Princess Diana getting involved, she changed the discourse of the debate on landmines from military to a humanitarian issue. There couldn't be a more appropriate place to begin this campaign than Angola, because this nation has the highest number of amputees per population than anywhere in the world. It is my sincere hope that by working together in the next few days, we shall focus world attention on this vital, but until now largely neglected, issue. Princess Diana gave her first major speech on her experience in Angola. She visited mine victims in the hospitals of Luanda and Huambo in Angola to get a first-hand glimpse of the brutality of landmines. 
in the Quito and Huambo regions, she spent a morning with Halo Trust, which trains Angolans to work on minefields to see the ravaging effects landmines have on farmland and on the citizens. In July 1997, Diana went on a three-day trip to Bosnia. Her purpose was to meet privately with the survivors and their families and to experience their pain, not to talk about policies and meet with government officials. She listened to the victims' stories, held their hands, and caressed their disfigured limbs. On September 1, 1997, in Oslo, Norway, the day after her tragic death, the United Nations Conference on Disarmament began negotiations to ban landmines in honor of Princess Diana. Princess Diana was the main contributor on the banning of landmines. Her work led to 122 countries signing the Mine Ban Treaty on December 3, 1997 in Ottawa, Canada. The Mine Ban Treaty or Ottawa Convention prevents the use, production, Goodbye. stockpiling and transfer of anti-personal landmines. In September of 1998, Burkina Faso was the 40th country to sign the treaty, which made it enter into force six months later. In March 1999, the treaty became international law and did this faster than any other treaty in history. Since then, landmines are now illegal in about two-thirds of all countries. As of February 15, 2006, 149 countries are state parties to the treaty, but none of this could have happened without the publicity and attention Princess Diana brought to this ignored problem. Forty countries, including the U.S., China, and Russia, still have not signed the treaty. Never fading with the sunset when the rain set in your footsteps will always fall here along England's greenest hills. Your candles burned out long before your legend ever will. We've lost those empty days without your smile. This torch we'll always carry for our nation's golden child. And even though we try, the truth brings us to tears. All our words cannot express the joy you've brought us through the years. It seems to me you've lived your life like a candle in the wind, never fading with the sunset when the rain set in. And your footsteps will always fall here along England's greenest hills. Your candles burned out long before your legend. Devil will Goodbye, England's rose. May you ever grow in our hearts. You were the grace that placed to us where lives were torn apart. Goodbye, this road from a country lost without your soul Who missed the wings of your compassion more than you will ever know And it seems to me you've lived your life like a candle in the wind Never fading with the sunset when the rain set in Footsteps will always fall here along England's greenest hills. Your candles burned out long before your legend ever will.